Good evening. Thank you for coming tonight. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to everybody here. Hopefully we have a good year. 2014 is around the corner. And uh, we're very fortunate uh, that we have uh, Mr. Steve Clemens to speak about what's happening in 2014. So we're uh, uh, having a very timely event uh, tonight. Thank you for coming in this uh, weather, and uh, I'm sure it will be a very uh, exciting uh, presentation today. Uh, we saw Mr. Clemens uh, about three weeks ago, four weeks ago in uh, Washington, D.C., when uh, myself and our president, uh, Ambassador Heather Hodges, and Mora, our executive director, attended the WACA conference. Uh, WACA is the mother organization for the uh, Council on World Affairs, and they put a uh, annual convention uh, with uh, choosing six uh, pertinent and major topics, and he was one of the panelists, and it was great presentation, great panel. Thank you for coming in this weather, and uh, we appreciate uh, you being here. Uh, I want to welcome you to the Council on World Affairs. This is one of our uh, public speaking uh, uh, programs. We hold about eight to ten speakers programs around the, around the year, uh, without the summer months. And uh, I see some new faces. Uh, I welcome you, uh, and we like you to join the uh, Council. <coughs> the Cleveland Council is one of the oldest chapters, uh, oldest councils in the country, over 90 years old now. We uh, have a very active uh, uh, mission. Uh, we support educational activities, Model UN, Bridges to the World, in schools and with teachers, and we're growing these programs. We uh, uh, administer the International Visitors Program, uh, which is sponsored by the United States uh, uh, sect, uh, State uh, State. State Department. And uh, they uh, bring teams from all over the world, professionals, uh, to spend time in different uh, cities in the United States. Uh, these teams, we host about 250 of them uh, a year. They spend time uh, meeting with their uh, uh, counterparts in all kinds of professions. Over the last few years, we met every profession you can imagine and they spend evenings with American families uh, to exchange uh, cultural issues and educational issues. And we like you to be a hosting uh, family for that. Uh, if you join the council, you will have a chance to spend some time uh, with these uh, folks. We also have these uh, pro uh, programs, uh, public speaking programs, and they've been a, a very outstanding uh, series uh, so far this year. And we like you to uh, join us on January 22nd, uh, we're getting uh, a very distinguished speaker, uh, Professor Michael Hudson from Georgetown and Singapore University. He's going to speak on uh, Arab politics, uh, looking for legitimacy. So I encourage you to attend. Uh, one final item uh, I mentioned about the International Visitor Program, and uh, we like to recognize our uh, main supporters, uh, so in each event uh, we're recognizing one of our partners in, in this where they host, you know, these groups. And today we, I like to recognize the Cuyahoga County uh, Public Library. They've been a very strong supporter of these teams that come from uh, all over the world. They hosted leaders from Paraguay, Bangladesh, Swaziland, and journalists from Italy, Germany, Vietnam, each time they, they, they open their facility and they do very active engagement with these teams. So I want to thank him uh, in the name of the council and the board uh, for their support and continued support uh, in the future. And we like to grow these programs and we encourage your different organizations and corporations to, to uh, also be uh, on that line of support. Uh, today, I will ask uh, Mr. Uh, Sari Feldman, the Executive Director of the Cuyahoga County Public Library, to come to the podium. Uh, and uh, also, Hallie Rich, I think, is, is here. She's here. Okay. I'm going to say a few words. You can join okay. both Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you for this great opportunity um, and this great partnership. 
So we're very pleased to host visitors from the Cleveland Council on World Affairs International Leadership Program because we know how uh, critical it is today to adopt and to share a more global perspective. Public libraries are certainly places where people come to access information and also to discover so much more about the world and to learn more about a particular subject. So when given the opportunity to host groups from the Cleveland Council on World Affairs, we see it as an enriching experience. We learn about topics of global importance and we also hear perspectives that can be so different from our own. The visits have provided us with the opportunity to share our story and potentially help others to reimagine the public library or libraries in the 21st century. We thank you for this great opportunity to engage with the International Visitors Program, and we value our partnership with the Cleveland Council on World Affairs. Thank you very much for recognizing us. Good evening, everyone. I'm Heather Hodges. I'm the President and Ambassador in Residence of the Cleveland Council on World Affairs. Very happy to see you this snowy evening. Um, you know, yesterday we had a speaker for a different group, and we spent the whole day worrying whether he would arrive, um, and there was not a single snowflake in Cleveland. And today I barely worried if Steve was going to arrive, and he made it. So I'm very glad to have you here. Um, and welcome to the last talk of the year, and uh, looking forward to seeing you in the, the following speakers in January and, and later on in, in spring. Uh, it, it occurred to me that uh, if you're looking for a holiday present for your loved ones, uh, the Waka tours are excellent, right? And we have many people here who have done them and can vouch for them, so that might be a nice stocking stuffer for someone, right? Um, I'm very pleased to, to have Steve Clemens here. Uh, I hope he won't mind that I share a few things that I picked up in the car when I, we, I picked him up at the airport. Uh, he has come here to Cleveland after traveling air travel of 38,000 miles. All right, so. <laughs> um, you have Steve's bio, I'm not gonna go into that, but he was on the trip with Vice President uh, Biden to South Korea, Japan, and China. Uh, he also, you know, got back and took off back for Doha and then came back uh, last night and went to New York uh, and then came here. So uh, he's a very busy man and I'm very pleased that he still could make it, although he's leaving at 5.45 in the morning, right? So uh, we are, uh, it's... Maybe. <laughs> maybe. No, we're a hardy town. It's a hardy airport. Uh, it's not like Washington, right? So. Um, I met Steve in Doha in May, and at the time, we, uh, there were, when we were at the airport waiting to take off, he was sort of watch, looking at his watch, hoping he would make it back to Washington, D.C., because he was going to join a few other journalists in a briefing at the White House with President Obama and other journalists. I was very impressed by that, and I thought, I have to bring this man to Cleveland. Right? Uh, but again, he's just come from Doha to brief us, right? So that, that adds to uh, our luck. Uh, he, he's an expert on just about everything, although I realized that I haven't tested him on Latin America, right? So that may be coming, Steve. That could be your challenge, right? But beyond that, he really knows the world, and he has excellent sources in the government and outside the government. And I, I would recommend to you his online column with The Atlantic. Uh, I there are his among, among the recent articles, there are articles on the trip, the Biden trip, uh, Kerry in Egypt, uh, an interview with Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel, uh, and then also several articles on domestic policy. Right? So I, I, uh, I think that you will enjoy getting his insights, uh, learning from, uh, as I say, from truly having excellent contacts. Um, I'm, uh, he's, t he's going to talk to us about the prospects for 2014, um, but we were also thinking that maybe we could branch off, given that it is the end of the year, and as I say, I challenge you to ask him about just probably any country. Um, but I will ask one thing, <laughs> yeah, how much time? <laughs> no, no, I mean, I'm just, 
Oh. <laughs> um, and um, one thing that I would just like to add, and maybe you can fit it in somewhere in the talk, is I'm just curious uh, what it's like to be in the entourage with Vice President Biden. I think that I assume you're going to talk a little bit about China or something like that. So if you could fit that in, that would be very nice. And welcome, and looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much, Heather. You guys are really intimidating because if we were in D.C., there'd be about three people here tonight. Uh, there'd be 200 registered and three people here. Um, it is uh, a... Because they know more. Yeah. Well, they think they do. Um, and it, it's, it's also uh, interesting because I just put on my Facebook, I'm, I'm a big social media guy, I do Twitter, Facebook and all this, and I took a picture of this beautiful building from outside with the snow just pouring down <laughs> and uh, telling my, many of my followers they're, they're, you know, that I said I'm you know, in lovely Cleveland with heavy snow, wonder if, that, if, if this town has guts because I have a 5.45 a.m. flight <laughs> because I had just flown, um, really got back last night from Doha. I was in Doha for one day after having been with Vice President Biden. It was kind of ridiculous, but it, Biden is, you know, despite being gaff prone and all of this, he's a fun and interesting guy to travel with. So we were in China, Japan, and South Korea, and I had the option of, of going from South Korea to Doha, but I really wanted to stay on the plane. And it's fun to be on Air Force Two. Uh, it, it's kind of intoxicating, and you know, and I'm, I'm into it. I'm into the cocktail party scene and hanging out with powerful people, and so, you know, when, when we flew back all the way over there, I was with a few journalists, Mark Landler of the New York Times, David Nakamura of the Washington Post, and a, a fellow named Josh Letterman with AP. They were the three other journalists on the trip. And uh, we landed, and I told everyone, I've got to rush to my car. And I was, it was like the day I met you in Doha, where I was freaking out as I was going to be get, you know, invited to this Obama briefing. And I was going to literally, if we landed in Dulles at the right time, if I had a car, if they were late, I might make it by one or two minutes in, into the White House. And if you're not there on time, you're not in. Uh, and this time, we were sitting there, and I knew that I was leaving at 9.50 PM on Qatar Airways. We were landing at 7.30, and they won't get the bags off of the plane until um, Vice President Biden's helicopter takes off. So the, the damn helicopter has to go before you get anything off the plane. And I'm sitting there, and Biden is just taking his good old time. And it's not fun at that point anymore. So, <laughs> and so I did barely make my flight. I was in, I was in uh, Doha for one day because I was flying back uh, for John Kerry's holiday party, which he hosts for at the State Department. And if any of you have been there, have you been former, sir, that beautiful eighth floor Franklin room with all, you know, incredible, uh, the, they've got committees and volunteers and whatnot that have restored it to a, just a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, set of diplomatic reception rooms. And of course, I land in Washington. It is cold, but it is, the sun is out. It's very nice. I am completely unaware of any snowstorm that may have hit that morning, but the government had been shut down. So the party was canceled that I had raced all the way from Doha to get to. And so that was my, my evening last night. Was, um, so I'm very much hoping that, that Cleveland has a lot more guts than, than DC does. Um, I thought we could do uh, a few things. You know, when I, when I give talks, I'm much more interested to sort of get snapshots of how you see the world and to try to respond to your questions. I also am a guy who ha has had a diverse background. I was the, as usually, you know, you get a, you know, people hold their breath when I say this, but I was the first director of the Nixon Center in Washington, of which I'm very proud. I worked for Jeff Bingham, a Democrat in the Senate. You know, I'm a non, a, a politically ambidextrous guy. Um, <laughs> And, and I'm interested in strategy. I come much more from the realist school of, of foreign policy, and we can talk about that. But I like to put my cards out there. I never presume the politics or preferences of others. I'm always interested in, in what you have to say. But, so, but I, I, do, I thought I would share a little bit about my, of my global map and what I see you know, with, with, with uh, your comments of telling you what would happen in 2014. I have no idea what's going to happen in 2014. <laughs> Let me just tell you. It's, it's, uh, I'm not really sure, but but I'm gonna. But for you, I'm gonna make it a, a calculated guess. And um, but talk a little bit about what's happening in foreign policy, and maybe a, a bit around the world. And then I'm sure there'll be two or three people who say, ah, but you didn't mention X country. I mean, this Heather's already set me up for Latin America. So uh, I'm sure there's some African states that I won't get to. Um, but when you look at what's happening and what a presidency does in dealing with the world, and people have a different take on where we are in the world. I look at this time as being highly, highly fragile in the world. There are a lot of, of 
key moments. And in my career in foreign policy, I've said to myself, well, would I have said that 10 years ago? Would I have said that 15 years ago? It maybe always feels fragile, uh, and you feel that you're at the precipice of, of real change, but that's not really true. When you look back at times, you know, and, and for me, the 1960s, um, of which I was very young at that time, but when you look back at Nixon, you look at Vietnam, you look at the doubt in the United, about the United States at that time, you look at high inflation, the state of the economy, there were a lot of things that were similar to what we had in this country up, you know, up, I would say today, but also it was worse a couple of years ago, where there was great global doubt about America's ability to deliver. And, and the consequences of being perceived as not being able to deliver are not just that your enemies and rivals rise and challenge you more, it's that your friends don't count on you as much. And this has created a lot of change in the world. So the Rubik's Cube of how the world sees itself, how it deals with problems and challenges, is really undergoing, in my view, significant stress and change. And there is no silver bullet <clears throat> to solving all of this. And I've just written a piece that will probably appear tomorrow at the Atlantic on kind of looking at the Obama administration's whack-a-mole problem, that right now it's stretched so thin. So just imagine this. I was with Vice President Biden this last week. We went to Japan, South Korea, and uh, China. Uh, President Obama, for obviously important reasons, just uh, uh, took uh, George and Laura Bush, uh, Hillary Clinton and others off to South Africa and did some on-the-side diplomacy that they don't want to talk about at Nelson Mandela's funeral. You, I was just with Chuck Hagel in Halifax at the International Security Summit where he uh, unveiled the first Arctic strategy, which isn't there. Why is the Arctic strategy important? Well, the Arctic is, is melting and thawing and freezing and going, but there are new sea routes, there are potential new bonanzas and resources, and so China, Russia, and other countries are squaring off uh, over that. So this is a whole new area that isn't part of even our classic thinking about national security issues. So Hegel's been doing that. Hegel's made over 25 calls to General al-Sisi in Egypt, and then he was just dispatched to Saudi Arabia to uh, hold the hand of the king there and let him know that we're not abandoning uh, Saudi Arabia while at the same time negotiating uh, a potential, potentially I think globally significant uh, nuclear arms deal with, or nuclear deal with um, Iran. Uh, Hegel, I was leaving Doha as Hegel was arriving and he just did a new um, uh, security arrangement with Qatar. And you have John Kerry who's everywhere around the world at the same time. He's the most peripatetic uh, Secretary of State we've seen in a long time. I have great respect for Hillary Clinton, who is also around the world in many ways, but John Kerry is throwing himself into his projects much more than Hillary was because he's never gonna run for president again. He's taking personal risks and credibility risks that I find at this point to be phenomenal and interesting, but they also could undo him. That's the nature of risk. You could really screw up and blow up your credibility. But Kerry is a very, very unusual Secretary of State, simultaneously taking on some of the big things that people used to only pretend to work on, but now he's really working on them. Uh, and we can talk about Syria, his role in Syria, trying to both <clears throat> preside over the destruction of chemical weapons and to nudge all the parties into a Geneva uh, process in Syria, but continuing to, well, I should say, tr refusing to let the Middle East peace process die. Uh, he is also going, he's in Asia this next week, so after the party uh, that he has, he's, he's off to uh, Asia again. So you've got a lot of people stretched very, very thin. Uh, I was in Germany just uh, a week and a half ago as well, and the Germans, you know, when I was putting this in my piece, you know, you imagine the things that aren't getting done. Angela Merkel is really, really angry, and Germans are really upset at the United States over the NSA spying situation. We have Brazil's president uh, refuse to see envoys and come to the United States because of, you know, her feeling uh, that it was inappropriate that they, we were spying on her on her calls. Brazil, in my mind, is a little bit different than Germany, but 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 Merkel and everyone I know is telling me that there is a palpable difference now in the collapse of trust between Germans and the United States. And we sent Ambassador Chris Murphy over, and Angela Merkel wouldn't see him. So she wants somebody important. She wants to photo up with John Kerry or Susan Rice. And remember, Susan Rice, National Security Advisor, was just over telling Hamid Karzai, you know, put up or shut up on a, a deal on keeping U.S. forces in Africa.